The Italian America Show is sponsored by Full Sponsorship, Cento Fine Foods, Trust Your Family with Our Family, The Bianchi Law Group, a team of former prosecutors who handle criminal matters, domestic violence, and municipal court throughout the state of New Jersey, Dr. K, the management professor and author of Rockstar Manager, From Theory to Practice. The authors of the number one international best-selling cookbook, Don't Cut the Basil, Five Generations of Authentic Italian Recipes. Dr. Mark D'Annunzio, National Fourth Vice President, Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America. The Grand Lodge of New York. The Grand Lodge of Delaware. The Grand Lodge of Ohio. The Grand Lodge of Virginia. The Grand Lodge of Rhode Island. The Grand Lodge of Maryland. The Grand Lodge of the Northwest, representing Oregon and Washington. Long Shot Productions, get back in the game. ACMT, excellence in aerospace manufacturing. And by Silver Spring Capital. Silver Spring Capital Wealth Management is a proud and longtime supporter of the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America. My name is Bob Bianchi. I'm the first national vice president of the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy. And on behalf of our national president, Nancy Quinn, we have a very special topic and some very special guests that we want to discuss. And it involves Columbus Day, folks. This has been a hotbed of a problem that's been going on for many, many years. There is so much misinformation that's out there. And I think it's now that the Italian American community has finally gotten up on its feet. Uh, the Commission for Social Justice, we have Robert Ferrito here, who is the president of that. We have Rafael Ortiz, who's a subject matter expert as well. So let's take a look at how this has devolved to the point that we can no longer have rational discussions about this, but rather, or intellectual discussions or educational discussions, but rather this is what we're seeing on the streets in 2020. Christopher Columbus, uh, who is a person who has been essentially deified around the world as the great explorer, the courageous explorer. There have been these attacks by many groups with him. And personally, I just have to say, this is an unacceptable manner with which to exercise what people call their freedom of expression. No, freedom of expression does not uh, allow violence, does not allow a desecration. This was declared a national holiday in this country. Uh, we have many cities that are named, schools that are named, and many places where people have revered Columbus. Okay, there's issues. We're ready here at the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy and America to debate anybody on this topic, because at least let's get the facts correct, even though now we're going back hundreds of years to judge a man based on the culture at that point in time. Uh, Lisa Marie Falbo from Longshot Productions out here in New Jersey had an opportunity to talk to a subject matter expert of great regard, uh, Carol Delaney. Lisa, can you please tell us who Carol is? Tell us a little bit about the interview process and what we can expect when you show us what you, uh, what you produced with her. Yeah, so Carol Delaney, she's a retired professor of anthropology at Stanford University. And she is very well versed in the history of Christopher Columbus, what he meant to obviously the, the discovery of, of America and really the Western hemisphere. But you'll see in this interview that she really dispels some of the stereotypes that are out there right now about Christopher Columbus. It's very interesting that he was such a revered character in American history, but over the past couple decades or so, he's become very vilified. So she works to dispel that stereotype. And I think she does a good job in, in proving her point and, and backing up those facts. You know, Lisa, uh, to, unfortunately today, people get their facts from Facebook and Twitter and social media. And one person says it, and then it becomes, I hate to use the expression, hashtag 
fake news about Columbus. Uh, so I really, I'm looking forward to seeing that video. Let's take a look. Carol Delaney, thank you so much for joining us today on a special edition of OSDIA Facebook Live celebrating Columbus Day. Now, you've been an astute scholar of everything Christopher Columbus. Hey, thank you, Selena. What piqued your interest about the Explorer? I knew hardly anything about Columbus except in 1992. He sailed the ocean plume. And when I was at Stanford, I was teaching a class in 99, 1999, called Millennial Fever. And I came across one little footnote of Columbus's apocalyptic millennial beliefs. I'd never heard of them, nor had any of the historians whom I asked. So I got intrigued because my interests have been in culture and religion. And the more I found out, the more I found that that's really what was um, sending him on this voyage. He wanted to go meet the Grand Khan of China, set up a trading post like Marco Polo, and the profits were to be used to finance a crusade to take Jerusalem back from the Muslims before the end of the world. Columbus figured out how many years were left and he thought there wasn't much time. And so he wanted this crusade to get Jerusalem back from the Muslims so that the Holy Sepulchre could be rebuilt so Christ could come again and save all the believers. And the other point is when he discovered um, the natives in Hispaniola, he wanted all of them to become Christian so they would be saved. And he kept asking Queen Isabella to send over priests so they could be taught and baptized so they too would be saved. And she never sent him. There was only one. It didn't do very much. The word genocide has been thrown around recently in regards to Christopher Columbus. But you say that genocide never had anything to do with his voyages. Can you please explain that? Well, genocide means the, you know, people trying to erase a whole e-race, an entire race. And that was not at all his purpose. As I said, he's still trying to find the Grand Khan. He wants to baptize everybody so they'd be saved. He never had a slave. He was against it. And it was these other people who were doing that. And in fact, horrible Bobadilla at one point captured him, put him in chains and sent him back to Spain. Queen Isabella released him immediately, but Columbus is being blamed for things that other men did. And he was totally against it. Carol, based on your research, what kind of person was Christopher Columbus? I think he was a good guy. Uh, he never had a slave. And as I mentioned, um, Bartolome de las Casas, who's been held up as the, you know, good guy, actually had slaves and had two encomiendas, which are big ranches run by slaves. And yet he, he's held up as the defender of the Indians, of the natives. And so they don't seem to get that. And Columbus never had a slave. It was the horrible people that Isabella sent over, Roldan and Bobadilla, who were, went marauding and raping against Columbus's orders. And he's one man. She sent over 17 ships and hundreds of men on the second voyage. And he couldn't control them all. And they kept going against his orders while he's still off half of the time, still sailing, looking for the Grand Khan. Carol, talk about how unfair it is to the legacy of Christopher Columbus that he went from being such a revered character in American history to a straight up villain in recent times. I think it's very unfair. And I think part of the reason is people know nothing about him and they are blaming him for introducing slavery. And maybe it's also because some of the indigenous people know are uh, concerned about their place in our country and their treatment in our country. And so they go back to the person who's called the discoverer. Of course, he never set foot on the land that we call America. I think probably the indigenous peoples in the country have not been treated that well. And I think something should be done about that, definitely. But to blame Columbus for it, I think is not right. It's what the people should be blamed are the rest of the population, you know, and 
more more things should be done for the indigenous peoples in this country obviously that needs to be done but to blame it or to call Colum to change columbus day to indigenous peoples day i also think it's not right there should maybe there should be a separate day i'm happy to have a separate day to be indigenous people and have that be a day where we learn more about the indigenous peoples in the country but also we need to learn people need to learn more about columbus Carol, thank you so much for joining us today. If you are interested in learning more about Christopher Columbus, make sure to pick up a copy of Carol's book, Columbus and the Quest for Jerusalem, from all major online retailers. Excellent interview, Elisa, and, and how thought-provoking it is that I would bet you 90% of the people that are throwing red paint on Columbus statutes and knocking them down, and then the political correctness of our politicians that don't even have the courage to at least put together a fact-finding commission would not even know that Columbus never stepped foot on the land called the United States of America, yet he's being vilified in the manner in which he is. She brings up thought-provoking comments, and my question to the audience out there and anybody that's against Columbus is, if Ms. Delaney, Dr. Delaney, who studies this as an anthropologist is correct, then doesn't it at least warrant an opportunity of taking a deep breath, stepping back a little bit, and let's determine the facts that what went on here. And I call upon all of our politicians that are pandering to this and throwing claws over the statutes, removing the statues, and uh, not allowing the Italian American community at all to have its say and listening to people like Dr. Delaney and others, shame on you for f falling into this. Hey, in the end analysis, I'm willing to go toe to toe with history and we'll see what happens, but unfortunately we don't even get there. What's the secret to my famous margarita pizza? Fresh basil, fresh mozzarella, and cento. People ask my wife, what's the secret to your bolognese? A little of this, a pinch of that, and cento. Grandma passed on two family secrets. Saute, don't fry, I and always cook with cento. <laughs> It's no secret that the best tasting dishes use Cento, San Marzano tomatoes imported from Italy, with nothing added, just authentic flavor for authentic Italian cooking. Cento, trust your family with our family. The Sons of Italy Foundation is the philanthropic arm of the Order of Sons and Daughters of Italy in America. It was founded in 1959 with the purpose of preserving Italian American culture, encouraging educational excellence among Italian Americans, and assisting in other areas such as veterans' causes and disaster relief. To date, the Sons of Italy Foundation has given tens of millions of dollars to these efforts. For more information on the Foundation or to donate, contact us today. Dr. Mary Kovach uh, from uh, the Sons and Daughters of Italy in America um, is going to make an introduction, introduction into another very important guest that we have on the show with us live today. So Raphael is a highly sought after expert on Christopher Columbus. He's authored four books on Columbus, three in English, one in Spanish. He has done his due diligence reading the actual journals written by Columbus himself and can point by point clarify any misinformation. He is a member of the Christopher Columbus Association and is currently collaborating with the National Columbus Education Foundation on their new website. We are thrilled to have you, Raphael, and welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. So, uh, Raphael, give us, you, you listen to Dr. Delaney. I see that Mayor, Dr. Kovach has behind her a number of your books, I believe, over what would be her left shoulder, I think it is. You're a subject matter expert. What do we need to know about these attacks on Columbus vis-a-vis -vis the idea that he was a murderer, that he committed genocide, uh, that he brought diseases to the, to the indigenous population? Give us from stem to stern in a short period of time. We have five to seven minutes. Those accusations are made up. They're false. Uh, number one, genocide. What they really mean by genocide is people who die of sickness, diseases, epidemics, and so on. That's not genocide. That's your sickness and diseases. Like right now, we are having this uh, pandemic right now. That's not a genocide. And uh, they, uh, plagues, epidemics, pandemics exist before Columbus, during Columbus, and after Columbus was dead. And the reason why they're getting away with that uh, argument is because 
most indigenous peoples in America before Columbus, they did not have, uh, have uh, a written language where we can see their history and their history of their plagues and sicknesses and diseases and so on. Uh, number two, slavery is not uh, America's original sin because slavery was not originated here in America. Civilization was came from the old world and then every, and then people moved to the new world and slavery was practiced over there. And then when people came here, they brought it here long before Christopher Columbus. And uh, also there are not one, but two indigenous people's day right now in the calendar. One is in August. It's known as International Indigenous Peoples Day, August, and then Native American Heritage Day or something like that is, is celebrated the Friday after Thanksgiving Day. And also November is Indigenous Peoples Month. So there is no need to rename anything. If we need to rename or change Columbus Day because uh, of the practice of conquest, war, and slavery, then I would argue then we should also eliminate uh, Indigenous Peoples Day because they also practice uh, war, conquest, and slavery uh, with the addition of uh, cannibalism and human sacrifices. If, uh, if we are going to rename places, uh, yeah, we need to be uh, consistent because Columbus, uh, as, as Delaney say, he did not own slave. But if we're gonna be consistent, then we need to maybe change the name of America because Amerigo Vespucci, he also sell, sold slave uh, during one of his uh, journeys. Maybe we need to change the name of Mexico and New Mexico because the Mexes, they were enslaving other people and using them in, as victims for human sacrifices. If we, are, if we are going to be consistent, then we need to rename the Caribbean because the name Caribbean came from the Caribs, which were a group of indigenous people who were cannibals and sometimes they kill the people in entire in entire islands. That's real genocide, but you won't hear that story because it won't fit the false narrative that people are telling you. And by, and by the way, I am, the, I am indigenous. I am not Italian American. I am uh, Puerto Rican of uh, Hispanic, of indigenous descent, specifically those that supposedly Christopher Columbus killed, the Tainos. Well, Mr. Ortiz, let me ask you a quick question. I mean, when Columbus uh, got the funding from the Spanish to be able to sail, because as I understand history, correct me if I'm wrong, he was looking for that funding. He was looking for alternate trade routes. He had some of the most extraordinary navigation concepts and courage of any navigator at the time. Um, was he doing this for the purpose of giving uh, the Queen Isabella the opportunity to subjugate people? Did he know at the time, if you know, that he knew that they would be bringing diseases? Was, was this what his primary motivation was or was it other? Was it another motivation? And then ultimately, like in all politics, including every country in the world, it can start to be used for a bad thing. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, the purpose of Columbus, uh, it was uh, it was like a multifaceted, meaning that it was uh, scientific because it was exploratory. It was uh, economic economics because they were looking for a new route for trade. It was also religious because he wanted to spread Christianity to people that had never heard, heard the gospel of Jesus. Uh, which I believe that's the real reason why Columbus is hated today. And uh, it was at some point it was going to be political because uh, conquest, uh, it, it, you know, like it or not, it was the, the rule of the day. People, you know, you had the Muslims who were trying to conquer the world because they believed they had that right. Today we believe people don't, don't, don't have the right to conquer others, but back then people 
were thinking very different. And then you have the Aztecs who believe they were, they had the right to conquer their neighbors and enslave them and use them as human sacrifices. And uh, in the case of Columbus, uh, the conquest, the way that he was looking for the conquest was through friendship, through relationships, and looking who, who would be his friends. In this case, it was the Tainos. And he would uh, make an alliance with them and, and fight at some point some common enemy. Uh, in, in, this, in his case was the Caribs, who were the people that I told you about, who were cannibals, who were invading the islands of the Caribbean. And he made a treaty with them to protect them, at least with one of the chiefs, the chief Wakanagari. He made uh, a treaty with him to protect him from his enemies. The Commission for Social Justice, CSJ, is the anti-defamation and positive image arm of the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America. The CSJ conducts campaigns at both community and national levels that support cultural and social issues of importance to Italian Americans, including the preservation of Columbus Day and his legacy. For more information on the CSJ or to donate, contact us today. What's the secret to my famous margarita pizza? Fresh basil, fresh mozzarella, and cento. People ask my wife, what's the secret to your bolognese? A little of this, a pinch of that, and cento. Grandma passed on two family secrets. Saute, don't fry, and, and always cook with cento. <laughs> it's no secret that the best tasting dishes use cento. San Marzano tomatoes imported from Italy, with nothing added, just authentic flavor for authentic Italian cooking. Cento, trust your family with our family. What can we do, and, and how do we get the message out? And is anybody listening, Robert? You know, you know what, at, at that, uh, Mrs. Famosa, you know what? You have to build a coalition, which we're doing. You have to expose, I believe you have to expose the weakness of the opposition argument. You know, I, the opposition, I believe, is intellectually lazy. I really do. Uh, we have to turn the popular dialogue around about Columbus. That's what we have to do. And it's all about the education. And, you know, since 2005, the Order of Sons and Daughters of Italian America has been addressing this. We've been battling this a long time. Uh, we put out a, a document called Fact Versus Fiction, and we addressed a lot of the issues that we're still addressing 15 years later. We're still talking about it. It's, it's been a long, a, a long battle that we've been fighting. And that's what we have to do. We have to create accessible and popular narrative materials. We have to get it out there. Despite the fact that we represent so many people um, in this country, why is it that we can't even get Congress to do something that is a basic thing that they would do if another ethnic group sneezed and asked them to do it, which is put a commission together, come up with findings to make a determination if these facts are accurate or not accurate, and let's go from there. You really don't want me to answer that because yeah. you know what? You touched upon a, a nerve because absolutely, we sat down with the Italian caucus from Washington and we have not heard from them yet. We, we, uh, we were supposed to do that, just what you're saying, have a, a symposium on this, and we have not heard from them yet. And you know what? We haven't heard from any of them. We've addressed them, and they're not responding. Yes, I do believe they feel that, you know, Italian Americans, they assimilated into, into America, and, and they became Americans. And, I, you know, we're, we're basically, we're warm people. We, you know, we don't want to start trouble. We just want to work. We want to build. We want to support our families. Uh, practice our traditions. And yes, I believe they totally ignored us. But you know what? That's going to change because this whole issue has united the Italian American community like I've never seen before. And, and I'm so proud that we're doing that. And I do believe that at some point we are going to turn this around because truth is on our side. And the more we educate and the more we get the information out there, the more we unite as Italian Americans. I do believe that this will happen. I really do. If people want to help donate, because some of this costs money. Go to CSJ, go to our website, you'll see the donate button. I'm sure Mark uh, will bring us up to speed on that. And you can donate. We absolutely need the funds to combat this, uh, this battle on two fronts between the, the education and between the, uh, the legal battle that's going on. We absolutely uh, could use the donations. So to circle back, Dr. Delaney addressed briefly in our interview, um, there are references that Columbus enslaved natives. This is falsely becoming his legacy when in fact, 
He sent secret letters to the Spanish asking for help and reporting some of the abuses of their men inflicted on the natives. We also know that Spanish law wouldn't allow Christians to be sold as slaves, another reason Columbus wanted to baptize the natives. Can you please set the record straight as to whether or not Columbus believed in slavery? When Columbus came to America in 1492, he met the Tainos. They were uh, victims of the Caribs, and he made, as I said, a treaty with one chief to protect him. When he came back from, for his second voyage, 1493, what he was doing was either destroying their canoes, the canoes of the Caribs, so, so he could stop them from doing what they were doing. And also he would, uh, yes, enslave them and send them to Spain. But that was the only people that he uh, suggested to enslave. And he sent a letter to the queen, even asking that they be treated humanely. And he was looking that they would learn Spanish so they could communicate at some point the gospel of Christ. And he said, when he came back from uh, for his second voyage also, he found that his men were dead. They were murdered. So he was forced to fight a few battles in Spaniola. Uh, and people, something that they won't tell you is that these few battles he did with the assistance of or with the help of other native tribes. And uh, the people who were defeated, he, they were sent again to uh, Spain and they were sold as slaves, but they were prisoners of war. It was temporal. When Columbus was removed from office, uh, the slavery was suspended. That's the story that people won't tell you. I, I challenge our political establishment on a state, local, and federal level to listen to this and prove us wrong, okay? Because we've had about enough of it. And the Italian-American community is going to respond in the voting box as well as our voices. I'm not asking for the scales to be tilted one way or the other. I'm saying before we throw paint on a man of historical character and significance and allow this to continue, that we do the minimum of using some resources to investigate the truthfulness of this. Mark Nunzio, the membership commission chairman for the Order of Sons and Daughters of Italy and America. Tell us how people can find us. On our website, osia.org, there's a membership button there. Just press that and there's two. You can become a member or it has membership options. I wanna thank everybody that's here. On behalf of the national president, Nancy DeFiori Quinn, my name is Bob Bianchi. Thank you very much for attending. For more information on Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America and how to join, please visit osia.org. Please also follow us on social media. The Italian America Show is sponsored by Full Sponsorship, Cento Fine Foods, Trust Your Family with Our Family, The Bianchi Law Group, a team of former prosecutors who handle criminal matters, domestic violence, and municipal court throughout the state of New Jersey. Dr. K, the management professor and author of Rockstar Manager, From Theory to Practice. The authors of the number one international best-selling cookbook, Don't Cut the Basil, Five Generations of Authentic Italian Recipes. Dr. Mark D'Annunzio, National Fourth Vice President, Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America. The Grand Lodge of New York. The Grand Lodge of Delaware. The Grand Lodge of Ohio. The Grand Lodge of Virginia. The Grand Lodge of Rhode Island. The Grand Lodge of Maryland. The Grand Lodge of the Northwest, representing Oregon and Washington. Long Shot Productions, get back in the game. ACMT, Excellence in Aerospace Manufacturing. And by Silver Spring Capital. Silver Spring Capital Wealth Management is a proud and longtime supporter of the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America.